Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kevin Faust. I'm a field service tech. I just want to have everybody come on in, have a seat. We're going to talk a little bit about brake maintenance on an SCAM brake. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of everybody knows how to do it, but we're going to just go ahead and, and uh, re review everything we've done. So uh, let's, we'll go ahead and get started. What I've done here is uh, just uh, when you come in for a service, obviously you want to check the brake, your brake strokes, make sure your brakes are adjusted properly. I've actually taken a piece of uh, tape measure and cut it off. And then I put a magnet on it and I actually stick it to my chamber like this. So that way there, when I go ahead, I can go ahead and, and um, check my brake strokes. The first thing you got to do is you want to check the free play. To check the free play on a brake stroke, you actually take a tool like this, put it in there, wedge it in there, and then pry it back. That's your free play, okay? Free play needs to be between 3 eighths of an inch and 5 eighths of an inch. All this is wrote down in our service manu manuals. Then the next thing you really want to do is, uh, is you go ahead and bleed your truck down to 90 PSI of uh, pressure. And then uh, wedge your brake pedal down if you're all by yourself or have somebody set on it. That will actually actuate these brakes to about 90, to between 90 and 100 PSI of brake pressure. Then you can go ahead and measure your, uh, your uh, stroke again. That's your power stroke. So again, like I said, if you're all by yourself, you know, you, you don't want to do it, always carry a tape measure, a piece like this with a magnet on it. It's easy to go ahead and put it up against your brake chamber and stick it on there, and then you can go ahead and measure it. The reason why we tell you to measure it, gentlemen, is because that's what the DOT does. They don't look at it and adjust it up and say, oh, yep, that, that looks good to me. They'll actually measure it. So if it's with, with out of spec, obviously, they're going to pull you off to the side if you're, um, if you're out of spec. So that's about where we're going to go on that just for brake adjustment. Next thing we're going to do is maintenance on brakes. First thing you want to do is when you go ahead and you start maintaining your brakes, when you go ahead and grease your brakes with the grease, uh, grease cert, you want to go ahead and, and grease this to purge. And a lot of people don't. They'll just pump two or three pumps in it. And what happens is, is over time, this connects uh, condensation. Condensation, obviously, is going to cause some rusting or corrosion action. So you want to grease the purge. And what I mean by purge is you want to see grease coming out of this area here. Okay? There's seals inside that cam tube. And the seals are made to purge to let grease out this area. And you want to grease it until the water or the dirty grease is purged out. Okay? And then go ahead and clean it up as you're done. If you happen to see purging here, where your S cam head is, then you got a bad grease seal. At that point in your maintenance, you're going to want to go ahead, take that down, and repair that grease seal, because you don't want to have that grease on your drums. You know, and the, and the reason why is because that'll also make them drums sticky. You know, and, and you'll you'll get a, a stick slip when you start applying the brake. It'll feel like a vibration. All right, contaminates the drums and the lining. So if you got any questions while we're doing this, please speak up. You know, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and entertain questions all the time. So again, as we said, during the maintenance time, you want to go ahead and grease. Grease until we have purge. Okay, grease until we have purge, clean it up. Make sure there's no purge here. Okay, everybody good with that? Come on, you guys are awful quiet. You already knew all this? All right, on brake chambers, I'm going to ask you about a brake chamber. This brake chamber has a, a boss that is round. You got a brake chamber with a boss that is square. What's the difference between the two brake chambers? Hey, come on. No, oh, come on. That's nice. I like that. I like that answer. I love that answer. But eh, you're wrong. All right, come on. Somebody, do we understand why? Round one. Who said that? Come on up. Long stroke. Which one's a long stroke? A square one's a long stroke. It's the difference between a long stroke and a standard chamber. This is a standard chamber. Long stroke chambers have square bosses on them. Okay? This chamber might have a tag on it that says long stroke on it. Okay? So we now we know the difference, right? Long stroke, standard stroke. Can we put long stroke and standard stroke on the same axle? No. Why? Because DOT says no. Not only that, you got different brake forces going on. Do you do that? No, I said it will break funny. It will break funny. All right. So with that, with that all said, now, now we're still in our, in our maintenance. We're still doing our PM. 
A lot of people think your PM's a quick, dirty, down and dirty, adjust the brakes, grease it, get it out. There's a lot more to this. All right, so now that we've got the difference between long stroke and standard stroke, now do we, if we have a six inch slack adjuster and a five and a half inch slack adjuster, do we all know the difference, how to tell that? The difference between a five and a half and a six inch slack adjuster is measured from the center of the, the center of, of the uh, um, camshaft to the center of the large clevis, basically like this. All right, one's five and a half and one's six inch. Are we allowed to have a five and a half and a six inch slack adjuster on the same axle? How about on the same truck? No, no, we're not. Have we seen it? Yes, we have. All right, you get that way if you're out in the field and you get a breakdown and stuff like that happens. Next thing that you're gonna do, let's say we gotta, we're gonna go ahead and uh, needs a brake job. If we want to do during our maintenance, we have a tool. Fenix actually has a tool that'll give you 50% of line wear and ready to change. This tool here will go through the, through the uh, um, dust shield inspection and you can slip it right in in between the blocks. All right, in between the blocks, if you got the big piece, obviously you got 50% of lining life left. If it's below that, if the lining's below that, then you take the other end, which is wore out. And if it's still above that, you're basically okay. But how far is up to you guys when you're ready to change. But if it's below that, then you need to change the shoes. So let's say ours is below that. We're gonna change the shoes now. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the wheels off, do all that other stuff. In the meantime, before we do anything else, after we take the wheels off and the drums off, we're gonna check cam bushings. How do we check cam bushings? First of all, we check in play to make sure what shims we've got. Second of all, we go ahead and we can take the dial indicator, we rotate it around and put it on top of the cam head. And you take the cam head and you move it up and down. That's called the radio play. All right, now I don't ever remember the, the, uh, what, what the measurements are, but I do right now, all right? And you, you can't be over 30 thousandths or, uh, of that. All right, 30 thousandths in play, or radio play, the bushing is worn too far or the cam is worn too far. All right, I know a lot of guys that shake it and it clunks a little bit and we're good. But if you do that, just always remember that you're gonna put another four, five, 600,000 miles on your brakes. By that time, you're bell mouthing the drums, you're wearing the brake shoes uneven, you're losing brake force, you're losing brake uh, torque. So cam bushings are a very cheap item, but there's something that you really, really need to take care of. So we go ahead and put the new cam bushing in. We check the, the radio play again. We're down below, you know, below 10,000 uh, radio play. We're good. Next thing we're going to check is we're going to check in play. Put the slack adjuster back on. Now we put a, a washer on the cam head. You can see that. We also put a washer on between the slack adjuster and the cam tube. And we do that for try to keep the dirt and stuff out of the bushing, out of the seals. The other thing too is it needs a spacer in there, okay? Now when we go ahead and we set up the candy in play, where's the, uh, where does all the shims go that we're gonna set up for the in play? If we're gonna have to shim this for in play, do we put shims in here? Do we put shims on the cam head? Or do we put shims on the outside? Good call. He says, depends on where the slack adjuster is sitting on your brake chamber. If we're checking in play only, okay, not slack adjuster alignment. And he brought up a great point. If we're checking slack adjuster alignment, and that is where the slack adjuster lines up with, a, with the uh, push rod. If it's offset, where are we going to put the washers? Okay, we're either going to put washers in or we're going to take washers out. Great, great, right here. If, let's, say, let's say we're out too far. So we're gonna pull the washers off from the inside and slide that in. That's what them washers are for, is for the adjustment of the alignment of the slack adjuster. The shims on the outside are for the in play. All right, the in play is five to 25 thousandths in play. So obviously you wanna get it as close to five or zero as you can, because as it starts to wear in over a month or so, you're gonna get a little more in play in there. All the shims are going to start working together. Everything's going to start campaigning. Everything's going to end up you know, getting a little bit larger than what you want. Okay? Any questions on that? 
Comments? Is it a good idea to replace the shims, these washers, when you put new in? When you're doing a brake job, best thing to do is change your, change your shim pack. Shims have been worn. They actually wore down a little bit. You can mic them, and, and you'll find out that they're wore down from what they originally were. Just from the sand and the dirt and the grime in the, in the roads. Okay? So once we do that again, we'll go ahead and we'll put the drums on. We'll make sure we measure our drums. Why do we want to measure our drums? Because our drums have a spec also. Drums are only allowed to be 120 thousandths out. You know, if they're at 16.5, is good. 16.20, I think, is bad. 16.620 is, is out. But we need to measure our drums. First of all, if your drum is out at the maximum anyways, that means you're going to have to have longer stroke with your brakes in order to uh, make full contact and also to get brake force. So believe me, in the 40 some odd years that SCAM brake has been around, a lot of people still think they can just switch the pads and move on. You know, remember, you can't do that. There's a lot more stuff involved in that. And that's the reason why we're talking about this. And I always want input from everybody else from the outside. I like to hear that input. All right. But I do know from being on the outside and then coming and working here with these with the engineering group, it made sense to me after they started explaining the reason why we did what we did. And so what they want you to do is it, it cost you a little bit more. But I always have people say, you know, I look, I got 600,000 miles out of my first set of brakes when the truck was brand new. I went ahead and replaced them, took care of everything. I only got 450 this time. Well, first of all, what kind of lining did you put on it? Second of all, did you check any of the measurements? Are your cams out of, out of whack? You know, is, uh, do they need to be shimmed or rebushed? There's a lot of that stuff that we put in brand new that you guys need to put in brand new the same. The few minutes it takes you to do that saves you a lot in the end. And if you can save, you know, another 100,000 miles on brake wear, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of downtime that you don't need. So is there any questions? There's got to be some questions here. Yes. The question is slack adjuster adjust on the return. Yes. Okay. They're clearance sensing. What that means is it senses the clearance between the drum and the lining. They're not stroke sensing, okay? They don't, they don't adjust on a stroke. They adjust on clearances between the drum and the lining. So as the brake gets hotter, it won't adjust up quicker because when a brake gets hot, the drum starts to expand, the stroke gets longer. Is that correct? Everybody agree with that? So the stroke's going to get longer, so now the adjuster's going to say, hey, I'm out past my adjustment point, so I'm going to adjust up. Now as you come down and you park and you cool down and everything returns back to somewhat normal size. Now you've got a tight brake because your adjuster has adjusted it up. Nice job. Is there any other questions? Concerns about bushings? <clears throat> we have two different kinds of bushings. We have nylon bushings. We also have a bronze bushing. So, I mean, you know, if you're doing heavy wear, dump trucks, uh, that type of stuff, you're probably pretty well off to do bronze bushings. They take a lot better breeding. Line haul vehicles going up and down the highway where everything's all nice and peaceful, as close as it can be. <laughs> we want to do nylon bushings. You got a question? Nice. Nice question. Question was is that he goes to one dealer, his dealer backs off his slack adjuster and then readjusts them without checking them. Again, you know, they tell you automatic slack adjusters, once you set them, forget them. You know, it's kind of Ron Popeil type thing, you know. So what you need to do is, is you really shouldn't be adjusting because uh, as you back them off all the time, obviously you're working against the clutches, the back off clutch. So you start wearing that out a little bit and things start loosening up. Again, that's the reason why we measure stuff. Put a tape measure on it, measure your free play, put 90 PSI against it, measure your power, your power stroke. If you're within the spec of the chamber and the slack adjuster, which with this type is about inch and a half stroke, power stroke. If you're within that inch and a half, you don't have any reason to adjust them. Now, if you got one that's out of adjustment and one that's in, you need to find out why the one is out of adjustment. Could be a bad slack adjuster, could be bad bushings. Uh, it, it, it could be multiple things, but you have to figure out why. But no, never, 
And I think the DOT or somebody, government, has a, has a ruling out that says do not adjust auto slacks. All right. Good question, too. I appreciate that. There's some hats there for you guys. Great questions. I appreciate everything. Have a great day.